in the presence, in their, in the presence, like in the region, is often due to massacres, or war, or genocide from from the political authorities of the Ottoman Empire. Due, like due to these realities, uh, appropriate, uh, due, like due to these realities, interviews often began with people's memory and perspectives towards the war before the first official closure. Um, the the present opinion of Yazidis, like their army neighbors, about Turks and Kurds are often contingent on history before 1921 and even up to the Karabakh Wars. In regards to narratives and stereotypes, for Armenians, Turks are considered the, the main enemy. This is a basic stereotype which everyone knows, and, and, the, and the Kurds' role comes and goes in this rhetoric, especially due to the Kurdish nationalist movement and its apology for the Armenian genocide. Yazidis also see Turks as their as their enemy due to uh, due to their presence there, but during my interviews, people almost always first mention Turks before anyone else. However, when mentioning the word Kurd, interview participants would often deviate from a Turkish people's role in massacres and begin to put and like begin to put the responsibility on Kurds. The familiar like the familiar line among most of these were, "Do you know our our grandparents used to say that it was actually the Kurds who killed us?" was a was a common narrative among a large collective of Yazidis. I feel like, like a female Yazidi academic, Teresa Amurian, whose paternal side is originally from Gars, uh, explained how her grandmother portrayed Yazidi relations with its neighbors. They had they had Kurds and Turks as neighbors, and she would always speak negatively about Kurds. She would always say that it was the Kurds who displaced and massacred us. It was the Turks' plan, but it was the Kurds that did it. According to her grandmother, Yazidi's role in Gars was one of caution in case of being tricked or robbed, while stories of relations with Armenians were quite positive in which interactions were based on honesty and trust. Many as these, almost almost all interviews or non-interviews, would always boast their relations with Armenians of being great and without any issue whatsoever. This was often like a pre-recorded propaganda thing, although there was a quite a level of genuine, like of genuineness. Uh, he is the language teacher who, who works in the villages, like like a 50-year-old Omar Mamoyan, also also with roots of Gars, discussed how during the massacres and displacement, they they like they escaped to the Armenian side because they had. They had always been in fraternal relations with Armenians. They were not Muslim like the others. Mamoyan also brought up an important symbol which delineates the present war and the and the and like and the Armenians which and the perspective of the Armenian side and the, and the perspective the Armenian side that has towards the Turkish side. And that was the that was the that was the that was the Alex River. And he discusses his grandmother's stories about crossing the Alex River to safety. Many, many of these spoke about the difficulty of crossing it and the difficulty of people, animals, possessions being swept away along the current. However, once they crossed, they, like they were in safety. The river is a symbol of struggle and division between good and evil for a lot, for, for many villagers and many people that I met. Um, during the Soviet period in the border, uh, most Yazidis uh, had a sense of peace. Um, well, there was a sense of peace for most Yazidis and like in Armenians and all, like and almost all people in the region. And during its rule, the border was closed, and passage outside the Soviet borders was heavily regulated by the government. And as we saw from uh, the early like, presentations, there were moments where the border had certain agreements, where there was flow, there was traffic flow. But oftentimes, uh, most people had a very difficult time going across. And and I would hear a lot of stories. Most of my there was a long list of stories. Uh, to be brief but relevant, there are stories where Kurds were would scream across the border asking for their relatives. There were people would cross the border to to find their Islamist to speak to Islamicized Yazidis. Relatives from Sinjar, from the from the current mountain that is currently being genocided, would come to the Turkish border to see their relatives and bribe Turkish um, Turkish border guards, but never enter. Um, they would they would get tricked. Um, some refugees after the genocide would stare stare across the border in longing, and uh, her whole life was a issue of longing and uh, missing her old village. However, despite these stories, most, most interviewees almost always stressed that interaction just did not exist. Unless they pertain to stories of border, village, border villages or Yazidis who were assigned jobs in Turkey. And this was not substantial. Nevertheless, the Yazidi community slowly established itself in the region. However, due to the, national, to the Soviet nationalities policy, they were, they were officially considered Kurds. How this affected Yazidis and who, like, who did not see themselves through an ethnic paradigm and who maintain animosity towards Kurds and all Muslims, Seems to be a significant seems seems to be significant to the situation today. Uh, the imposition of a Kurdish identity on on Yazidis was a was a contributing reason to the nationalistic movement in the late 1980s. I'm, I'm going to miss the whole Soviet history of Yazidis and Kurds. If there's any questions about it, I'd be glad to answer. Um, due to time issues, but uh, in the 1980s there was a nationalistic movement 
that rally around the Yazdi identity as a separate one from the Kurdish one. However, before the movement, most Yazdis during Soviet rule went along with or accepted the Kurdish status due to its contributions and cultivation to their, to their, to their, to their culture. Um, despite the cultural progress during the Soviet era, a group of Yazdis led a nationalistic movement revolving around the Yazdi identity. It was mostly by religious leaders and laymen. Aziz Amari Tamoyan, which is the man in both these photos, um, Karame Sadonch, and Sheikhs Hassane Mahmoud Tamoyan and Hassane Hassanian. After Armenia's independence, Yazdis began creating new institutions and positions for themselves. Aziz Tamoyan, who's pictured there, is the most well, is the most recognized figure of the movement today. He's a quite old man, like at the present.